subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for watching more video. Order. How do you select a vendor? To select the vendor, there is a little drop down here that you can use to search for the vendor. Let me show it here. If you place your cursor on the vendor field, this little pop-up opens up. And then click on that set of squares and you see a pop-up. Now, this I'm showing this pop-up in full screen, but depending on your screen's resolution, it could show itself differently. What is the search criteria we want to use to select the vendor? We know this vendor is in Chicago, so we're going to use the city of Chicago as search criteria. So type in Chicago. And when you hit on the green check mark, you're asking the system to search for all the vendors residing in the city of Chicago. And these are the set of vendors residing in the city of Chicago, right? So C Cigna PPO, Fidelity 401k services, Merrill Lynch, Cigna, so on and so forth. So this is called the vendor listing. You have used a particular search criteria called city equals Chicago and search for all the vendors in that city. Now, I've selected a vendor, say 1222, two, two, and then did nothing. Say, where is 1222? Two, two, two? Here is our 1222. Two, two. Just double click that. And then it gets itself placed in the vendor field. And then do nothing. What happens? Nothing happens, right? But if I hit enter or hit on this green check mark, then the system pulls the information against the vendor 1222. As you can see, it says now that it's ABC Supply Company. That was not how the screen was previously, right? So it pulled the information on the vendor as soon as you hit enter or the green check mark. That shows us something. Whenever you enter something on the screen, the system would not validate it right away because we are looking at a client server architecture. This is the GUI. Think of something that you do on the browser, like a Gmail or something. Whatever you do might not be validated immediately. So unless you hit enter or you know click a button like send or something, that's when the browser reaches out to the server and validates certain data. Hitting enter or hitting the check mark are equivalent. Both are the same. When in doubt, always hit enter. Then you see this message here called enter purchase org. And you see that the color of it is red. What does it signify? What it means this is a hard error and you can't proceed forward. Meaning, you know, you hit enter, you try to enter something else, it doesn't let you. It's, it's a hard error. So whenever you see an error, you have to address it first before you move forward. In this case, the system is asking you to enter purchase org data. Don't worry about what purchase org data is. Just enter purchase org data purchase group and company code and we can proceed forward. So we're going to enter 3000. We can enter any purchase group. Uh, if you don't know, you can just go here to search help. You know the double squares, right? Select that and select any purchase group. Select the company code of 3000 and hit enter. So we have entered our purchase org and purchase group and the entire header has been filled up for you. What do I mean by the header? It's this section, the one that is highlighted in the blue box. It contains a set of tabs like delivery invoice, conditions, text, address. So when I said the header is filled up, you might have a question. Is it really filled up? Because you only see the org data tab. Just go to the rest of the tabs. Click on each of the tabs. 
delivery invoice. You see, the data like net payment terms is filled up, incur terms is filled up, currency is filled up, go to conditions or texts. The data is all filled up for you. Why? Because you have entered the vendor and purchase org data. Okay. So where do you think it got the address from? For example, the 100 North Avenue 60606. That's the address of the vendor. So you have selected a vendor 1222 ABC Supply Company. As soon as you have entered the vendor and entered the purchase org data, SAP has already pulled the data for you into each of the respective tabs. So the header data is ready for you now. So when you create a purchase order, the first thing that you do is to enter a vendor, enter purchase org data, and your header data is ready. And then we have these sections that you can use to expand and collapse different sections of the purchase order. How many sections do we have? We have three sections. One is the header, second is the line item, and the third is the line item details. We'll see it in a moment. So these are the collapsible sections that I was talking about. For example, you can collapse the entire header by clicking on this button. You can collapse the entire header right and you can expand the item overview like i said there are three sections right the header section item overview and item details now you can open the item details by clicking on this button and if you want to get the header out of the way just click on this and the header will just be collapsed and you will have the entire grid of line items for you to enter nice and clean Right, so this is the grid I was talking about, line item grid, because you have collapsed the header, it's out of the way, but it's still there, just hidden from your view. Once your header is done, we start to enter line items. When I mean line items, these are materials that you need from that vendor. What do we need? We are a coffee shop, right? We need flour, we need sugar, that kind of stuff. This is where you enter the material or your materials or products that we are talking about typically have a code. It's called a material master. We'll talk about material master later, but for now, let's just see if we have a material called flower. Again, what do we do? We go and use search help for that. Go there. and type in star flower star why are we using the stars the stars are being used because we don't know how the material is called you know is it wheat flower is it um flower and then you know white or is it um you know uh, you know what combinations of words are used with the word flower so that's the reason why we use star, flower, star. Star is like a wild card operator in SAP. Whenever you want to search for something, star is your wild card operator. What it means in this case is search for everything that has the word flower in it in any possible combination. Again, use the green check mark or hit enter to let SAP search. See, these are the words that I was talking about. We have corn flour, we have wheat flour, we have enriched flour, we have flour, comma, whole grain, hard wheat flour. Point being, flour, the word flour could come in any possible combination. Let's go and select just the flour, BP401. That is the code that's given by somebody who has created this material master. Okay. Again, I'm using the word material master. Don't worry about it. We'll get to it in the later chapters. So double click BP401 and then hit enter. Okay. Now, it's asking you 
to enter a plant. How do you know that? You see a warning message here at the left bottom corner. Enter plant. So it's taking the focus over to the plant column to let you know that you have to enter a plant. So what have we done just now? We have searched for a material using wildcard operator and selected a particular material, in this case BP401, and hit enter. And now it's asking us for a plant, right? <coughs> so what is a plant? A plant is a place where goods are manufactured. Like So this is your coffee shop, right? This is your coffee shop, and each coffee shop could be associated with one or more plants. Why do you need a plant for a coffee store? So you don't just sell coffee, right? You sell some pastry, you sell some bread maybe, or you sell some stuff, right, along with your coffee. Imagine you're a Starbucks coffee store. You know, apart from coffee, coffee is just some of the things that they sell. Where are the rest of the things manufactured? They're manufactured in a plant, a factory. It makes your candy, it makes your pastry, all that kind of good stuff, right? So you can go ahead and enter a plant here. Again, you can use the search help and enter your plant. Like for example, I want to enter the Chicago plant, 3100, right? Just double click it and hit enter. Right? What is the next thing that you have to enter? It says net price must be greater than zero. So it's asking you to enter a price. And go there and put four dollars, five dollars per kilo, whatever the price is, right? And hit enter. Right? And the next thing is to enter a quantity. Okay? We enter a quantity of um, say 100 kilos. So what are we doing here? We're asking the system to create a purchase order with this vendor, ABC Supply Company in Chicago. For what? For flour in 100 quantity at a price of $4 per kilo. Right? Oh, by the way, if I did not enter this, right? If I did not enter this, hit enter, you'll see that it, it's asking me to enter a quantity, right? This on the header or on the toolbar is where all these messages that the system is throwing are accumulated. So if you look at that, you know, there were so many different messages that the system was throwing, right? So it says vendor not found or, um, you know, enter a price or enter a plant. These are all the different messages that the system is throwing at you. Which is just saying, I need this information to proceed forward. Right? That's how the program of purchase order is written. If you want to look at the list of error messages at any point, you can just click on this button in the PO header and you'll see all the messages. Right? Right now, we have entered everything and everything is clean and you know this this button is gone here right that messages button is gone whenever you see that messages button this button that just means that you know there is something pending for you to enter in order for the purchase order screen to proceed forward right and then there are different kinds of messages that get thrown at you so in this case, anything with a red is typically an error message, right? And you know that by the type of the message. E stands for error, right? And another word of caution, sometimes you might not know where to enter a plant because plant is, for example, on this screen, you don't see plant, right? get material, you got quantity, you got unit of measure, kilos or whatever, you got the price, but where is plant? Plant is a little bit out to the right. So just use the scroll bar to scroll to the right and there you have a plant. 
just in case you don't know where the plant is or you don't know where certain fields are at the line item level remember there is a scroll bar that you can use to scroll right and left and then figure out where your particular field is right so we have selected a plant 3100 for chicago there are many plants we've just selected one plant and then we have entered a quantity 10 kilos 100 kilos right we have also entered a price of four dollars per kilo sometimes this could be pulled in automatically i'll show you examples of when it will be pulled in automatically but for now we are entering a price now why do we need to enter this price now quantity anybody can understand we need this quantity but why do we need to enter a price the price is the expected price that we have negotiated with this vendor already you don't just create this purchase order with the vendor just like that right you would have already called them or you might already have their price list so you know what the expected price of flour is from this particular vendor in this case it's four dollars per kilo when when there are no more errors this button is gone and then you have a clean toolbar and a clean header and line items that means that there are no more errors you can go ahead and save it and what happens when you save it let's see save it and the system takes a moment to create the purchase order for you and after it creates the purchase order it's going to give you a unique purchase order number think of it like the order number that you get when you place an order on amazon whenever you place an order on amazon you get a unique purchase order number right that's unique across amazon meaning i won't get the same number as you so it's unique across amazon's all amazon's orders so this number four five zero 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 one seven one seven five is a unique purchase order number the system has generated for this document or this purchase order